Welcome to Brunswick Beat. Brunswick County's only television news show brought to you by the Brunswick Beacon. I'm Rachel Johnson. And I'm Stacey Manning. A 20-year-old woman was killed Sunday in what investigators say appears to be an accidental shooting. Samantha Reynolds of Paradise Drive in Winnebo was killed Sunday afternoon when she was shot in the abdomen. A second subject was also shot in the hand. George Woods, 35 of Fayetteville, was attempting to put a gun away after target shooting with Reynolds near her home. The gun fired a single shot, striking Woods in the hand and then striking Reynolds in the abdomen. At press time Tuesday, no charges had been filed. What happened to three-year-old Jerron Liddell McAllister? The little boy from Chalet was pronounced dead at Brunswick Novant Me Medical Center around 9 a.m. March 1st, shortly after being dropped off by a man who was reportedly babysitting him. That man, Monte Andrea Murray, ultimately fled from the hospital, sparking a multi-agency high-speed police chase from a Chalot neighborhood north on U.S. 17. Today, Murray, 26, and Jesse Lamont Holt, 34, who was also babysitting the child, are in jail, but neither have been charged with Jerron's death. The Beacon has obtained a search warrant that outlines Murray's and Holt's account of events of that night. Find details in this week's Beacon. Six people have been arrested in connection with the shooting of a star football player last year. None have been charged with the murder of 19-year-old Marcus Hankins. The former South Brunswick High School football star was shot to death last April 16th during a private party at the Brunswick County Democratic Party headquarters in Bolivia. The following people have been charged with felony enticing a riot. Samar Gardner, 28 of Bolivia, Cedric Hewitt, 22 of Supply, Jamar Bethea, 18 of Shalot, Michael Frank, 18 of Calabash, Tyrell Webb, and Rashawn Bellamy. Kelly Tooley, 21 of Bolivia, was arrested and charged with possession and sale of alcohol without a license, possession of spiritus liquor where such possession was not authorized by ABC law. Four South Carolina suspects were arrested during a controlled traffic stop last Thursday, March 8th, on U.S. 17 near Randolphville Road in Bolivia. They see, the seized heroin included 600 bindles or prepackaged dosage units of heroin and an additional 10 grams of heroin. Terrence McFadden, 23, Thomas Alexander Murphy, 28, Letitia Green, 21, and Desaria Trapper, 22, were all arrested without an incident. All four suspects were charged with three counts each of trafficking heroin. Each suspect remains in custody at the Brunswick County Detention Center under a $1 million secured bond. The South End Task Force is investigating an attempted armed robbery Monday morning at a Calabash restaurant. Sheriff deputies responded to a call at George's Pancake House early Monday. A detective says the investigation centers around a male who was wearing a black hoodie with a mask and blue jeans. He had a black ski mask with the eye slots cut out. The incident is described as an armed robbery because there was a tool reportedly wielded by the man at the restaurant on Beach Drive. She's outspoken and unapologetic. In the words of Thomas Jefferson, she speaks with boldness and without fear. Jenny Qualia is the first recipient of the Brunswick Beacon Citizens First Amendment Award. Qualia was selected for the inaugural award from nominations the Beacon received from community members for her commitment to the First Amendment, freedom of information, and the public's right to know. To read more about Qualia, including why she received the award, pick up this week's Beacon. Qualia's award was part of our Sunshine Week coverage. This year is the fifth year the Beacon has participated in Sunshine Week, a week in March dedicated to freedom of information and the public's right to know. In this week's Beacon, you'll find tips on how to make a public records request, information about open meetings in North Carolina, court access, and the Freedom of Information Act. You'll also find a list of what records are public at every level of government. Also in honor of Sunshine Week, we take a look at government officials who do it right. We have a feature on Brunswick County Register of Deeds, Brenda Mercer Clemens, and Brunswick County Attorney Huey Marshall. We also have a feature on how and where you can access county and school officials' emails. Find out where in the county complex you can make the proper public records requests from the courthouse to the Board of Elections. Find all of these stories and much more in this week's Beacon, available on newsstands now. Hi, I'm Stacy Manning, Managing Editor of the Brunswick Beacon. Do you have a community event you'd like to tell our community about? You can email it to me at editor at brunswickbeacon.com or you can log on to our website at www.brunswickbeacon.com. Look for the submit news icon near the top right hand corner of the page. Deadlines are noon each Friday.
Welcome to the Beacon Sports Report. I'm your guest sports reporter, Morgan Wade. In West Brunswick High School baseball action, the Trojans opened its conference season by beating Whiteville 6-2 on Friday night. West starter Ryan Kaysen, a junior, gave up three hits and one earned run in four innings. He walked four, hit one, and struck out six. Reliever Landon Tilly, a junior, gave up no hits and no runs in three innings and in getting the victory. He walked one, hit one, and struck out four. West had six hits against the Wolfpack. Tilly was two for three with a double and three RBIs. In Brunswick Community College baseball action, Michael Green's bid for a second straight perfect game ended when he hit first Patrick Henry Community College batter he faced Saturday. But seven innings later, he completed a second straight no-hitter. Until his last two starts, Green had never thrown a no-hitter. BCC beat the Patriots in eight innings, and Green struck out seven batters. Green, a sophomore who has signed with Winthrop University, threw a five-inning perfect game on March 3rd. Against Patrick Henry, Green walked three and hit two. For the season, Green is 4-0 and zero and entered the game with a 2.50 era. For the game, Green threw 101 pitches, 57 of them strikes. He had nine ground outs and five fly outs. Of the 27 batters he faced, he threw first pitch strikes to 18 of them. UNC Charlotte Track and Field Associate Head Coach Timothy Vault has been named the Southeast Region Women's Assistant Coach of the Year. Vault, who was selected for the award by a group of region-specific coaches, joins an elite group of honorees, many of whom participate in the NCAA Indoor Championship meet. This marks the second Region Coach of the Year honor of Vault's four-year career at UNCC, with his first award coming during the 2009 indoor season. Vault was a two-sport standout at West Brunswick High School, earning All-State and All-Conference honors in football and track, and was a team MVP in track. As a senior in 1996, he earned the Eastern North Carolina Toast of the Coast Regional Runner of the Year Award. You can read all these stories and see more great photos in this week's sports section of The Beacon. Laura, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. And um, who do we have here today at Cattails? This is Razzle. Razzle is uh, about a year old. She is uh, spayed. She's up to date on all her shots and tests. Mm -hmm. um, she's also fronty clawed and microchipped. Oh, okay. Um, she's here with her brother also. Her brother's name is Elliot. And Razzle and Elliot were... Um, Abandoned in a vet's office, uh, and they called us to see if we would be able to take her. And we thought she's so pretty, and her coloring she is really so unique. Is. Yeah, and she's just as nice as can be. And she's adjusting to life here, but she would love to be in someone's home instead of here. Absolutely. Now, would you like for her and Elliot to be adopted together? Oh, it'd be wonderful if they could go together. But even if they could each get separate homes. We just like to get them good homes, people who are going to love them forever. Oh, and since she's only about a year old, she has lots of years of love to give. She's a doll baby. Yes. There are all the cats and kittens here at Cattails, so come on down and visit with them. They're open on Wednesdays from 11 to 1, and on Saturdays and Sundays from 11 to 3. And you have some other places where people can visit with the cats, too. We do. They can also come to... PetSmart in Wilmington on Friday nights and Saturday afternoons. We're there with lots of our cats who are looking for good homes. Great. Okay, Trish, thank you so much. Hi, I'm 
Stacy Manning, Managing Editor of the Brunswick Beacon. Did you get engaged recently or married? Have you celebrated a milestone anniversary or did you have a baby? How about letting us share the news with our readers? You can email your social news to me at editor at brunswickbeacon.com or you can log on to our website at www.brunswickbeacon.com. Look for the submit news icon near the top right hand corner of the page. Deadlines are noon each Friday. At 88 years old, Shalote resident London Gore doesn't know much about slowing down. The World War II U.S. Army veteran still plays and wins regular games of pool at the Shalote Senior Center. He plays bluegrass several times a month at local jams, but Gore's latest claim to fame involves the books he has written. His first one, Memories of the Past, is a collection of poems he's written over the years. His latest book is about his life that began growing up in Ash, called Hard Times and More Hard Times. He's been writing all of his life and still enjoys entertaining people with the songs he composes and plays on his guitar. West Brunswick High School is rallying for a cure. Two weeks ago, West Brunswick High School students and staff kicked off Relay for Life season with an educational assembly where students heard personal stories from families who have lost loved ones to cancer. Students all over campus are raising funds and awareness for the upcoming Relay event in May. On Thursday, March 22nd, the School Rallies for a Cure will begin at 5 p.m. with a chili dinner for $5. There will also be a silent auction. Then at 7 p.m., the music department and faculty are teaming up for a talent show to include special guest alumni. Tickets are $5 in advance or at the door. Tickets for both dinner and a show are $10 or $12 at the door. Tickets are on sale now by calling the school at 754-4338 or by stopping in the school's front office. For one hour on March 31st, you can join millions of others worldwide who are making a stand to be more Earth friendly. You can show your dedication and celebrate the Earth by turning off all unnecessary lights and electronics between 8.30 and 9.30 p.m. on the 31st. Brunswick County Towns are showing their support for the environmental action movement. Organizers hope it will catch on and people will turn off their lights all over Brunswick County. For more information on Earth Hour and its origins, visit earthhour.org. This week, the Beacon's first Real Women of 2012 hits the stands. With Spring in the Air, the magazine offers the perfect combination of spring fashions to Easter brunch ideas. Don't miss the spread on Whiff Whims and find out who the woman behind the Seaside United Methodist Church Easter Cantata is. All that and much more is inside the spring edition of Real Women, a special supplement to the Beacon. It can be found inside this week's paper. That's all the time we have for tonight, but you can read all these stories and much more in this week's Beacon. If you have comments or suggestions for us at Brunswick Beat, you can email us at brunswickbeat at brunswickbeacon.com. Don't forget to follow the Beacon on Facebook and Twitter. Just search for Brunswick Beacon. Thank you for joining us, and don't forget to tune in next week for a brand new edition of the Brunswick Beat, Brunswick County's only television news show. We close out this week's show with images from last weekend's Cruising for a Cure car show at Planet Fun.